Hey everybody, uh, this is going to be a test. Uh, I have a new recording device for audio and I'm going to see how it works for this video and see uh, if I get good sound quality, although I've been getting pretty good sound quality lately. Uh, anyway, today I'm bringing you a streaming movie that is exclusive on Shutter. Uh, definitely an odd one, so bear with me. And this is a movie called November. Uh, from 2017. Uh, it is shot in black and white, so it's got that artsy look, of course. Uh, and it is East Estonian, Estonian, I think is how you say it. Um, directed by Rainier Sarat. It's S A R R A T. Uh, the main characters are Lena, and uh, she is a kind of a, a peasant, I guess you'd say. This takes place in Estonia, and I'm not sure back the exact time period. I mean, they have barons and they have, you know, very poor peasant type people. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking you're looking at like, you know, the 1600s or 1700s or 1500s or something like that. Because uh, there is mentions of the plague too, so it might even be earlier. So you got Lena, you've got um, Hans, who is a, another local younger man, and he's played by uh, Jürgen Link. Uh, and then you have the Baron and the Baroness's daughter. And the Baron is probably the most famous person. He's played by uh, Dieter Laser, famously Dr. Heiter from the, uh, the infamous Human Centipede. And then the Baron's daughter is played by uh, Jet Lorna. Now, this was a very strange movie. It's really steeped in folklore. So I have a feeling if you are very familiar with European or Estonian folklore, you'll probably get a ton out of this. But even if you don't get that and you like those kind of, um, the kind of the folk horror that's been a thing lately with the witch, um, I'm thinking like Hagazusa, if you've seen that movie, even some older stuff like Jan Svank Meyers, um, what is it, uh, Little Otik, I think was his movie. Uh, kind of get those feelings of things where there's some fantastical elements that seem like they're based out of folklore and um, give probably more meaning if you know the meaning of that. Now, to give you a flavor of this this movie and kind of what its you know aesthetic is, uh, right before the title sequence, you've got uh, an inclusion of something called a crat. And I actually did look up this piece of folklore, although I, the rest of it I didn't really look up to get all into it. But a crat is like this, um, it's kind of like a creature, like a servant creature that someone can make for themselves out of tools and household items. So early on you see this thing and it looks like, and I'll, if I have a picture of it I'll, I'll throw it in here, but it looks kind of like uh, uh, like shovels and hoes and sticks and things and it's like in a tri, a triform symbolic shape um, probably about five feet tall, and it's kind of rotating itself across the ground towards a cow. And then at some point, it you know attaches itself to the, the the harness of the cow, and then it starts spinning and flies in the air and pulls the cow up into the air and flies it off to this farmhouse. And really early, that will give you a touch of a feeling of the kind of weird fantasy that's involved in this. And some of it's dark, and some of it's funny, some of it's scatological, and um, but it's always interesting and surprising, and also kind of a little in that David Lynch territory, where it has a story, but there's some elements that are really weird, strange. Uh, what's the basic story? The basic story is that you've got these uh, kind of poor peasants in town, uh, the ones I mentioned, uh, Lena and Hans, uh, Lena secretly fancies Hans and Hans uh, has his eye on the Baron's daughter and so that way you have kind of a three-way desire triangle going on there but that really is just the basic framework for all these strange little vignettes uh, where you know people can turn into animals not all the werewolves exactly but you have people turning into animals and you've got uh, people making new crats for themselves and you've got you know, meetings at the crossroads at night to uh, make a deal with the devil, but not the kind of devil we usually see in movies. Uh, you've got uh, 
you know, visitation by ancestor, ghosts to your houses. So um, if any of this sounds interesting to you and you want to go down a really weird path of folklore, especially Eastern European folklore that you may have never encountered before, it has dark moments. Um, like I said, it has a few gross out moments. But overall, it's kind of a, I would say, kind of a, a dark fantasy fairy tales world in a lynch kind of uh, aesthetic, I guess is the best way I could describe it. Uh, if all that sounds interesting to you, you might check this out and you might get something you'd like out of it. I wouldn't say it's totally cohesive. Um, it isn't like Lynch. It doesn't have the most satisfying narrative. It doesn't have as much of an emotional heft to it as some movies can have. But it definitely uh, has a ton of imagination, some strikingly beautiful scenes, and some really interesting, weird, uh, practical effects, especially with the Kratz. The Kratz are really... Really, every time they're on screen, they're very, very fascinating and very cool and, and funny, too. Um, so I would say for people that that sounds interesting, too, give November a chance. Uh, it is on a couple places. I think you can get it on Vudu for free if you have a Vudu account. You can rent it, and then also it's on Shudder. So uh, those are all places you can see it. Um, for me, it's probably in the three and a half, four star, star range. Um, it's not one that I can wholeheartedly recommend to anybody. But I would say if you're more adventurous and you're into those kind of things that we've discussed earlier in this review, uh, you might give November a chance. All right, I'll be back soon with something new.